Hello, everybody, and welcome to the vloggy thing. And there's cat number one. And say hello to cat number two. This is Zelda. She likes sleeping on my lap a lot. <laughs> and this camera seems to be a little bit flaky right now. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I am recording this uh, yesterday. I am speaking to you from the past. Um, because I, I, I don't know, I've been getting into this thing where I need to keep doing something, anything, just anything really works for me. And, uh, I've had, I've had a lot of free time, so I've been recording a lot of videos. Uh, as I'm sure you guys have noticed, I've been putting up like two a day and this one's special. It's going to be three a day because I keep feeling like, like I said, I keep feeling like I have to keep doing this stuff but I'm getting too far ahead of myself. So I'm actually starting to put multiple videos a day. And this one's going to be the third one today, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and uh, I've got a small little list of things that I want to talk about because um, I don't think any one of these things can actually fill up an entire half an hour, unlike that one question that I answered in the last vloggy thing. <laughs> Bye, kitty. Um, so first things first, a little bit of news. Uh, I, as you guys, I'm sure you guys could tell, I got my server back up and running. Uh, turns out it was just the power supply. Uh, I did exactly what I said I was going to. I took the power supply out of my gaming rig there and put it into my server, and it fired right up. Poof, instant, perfect. Um, so as I was coming home from work, um, I stopped by at Best Buy, to look at power supplies. And I was debating on the power supply, which power supply I needed. I was like, oh crap, what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? Because the, you have to worry about wattage and you have to worry about the connectors and stuff like that. Um, though most new power supplies would have the connectors that I would need anyway, so it's not really a concern there. Uh, but it was the wattage that was important because I didn't want to get too little power because if I got too little power, then I'm going to blow out the uh, the, the, the power supply again. Uh, and if I get too much power, uh, one, it's not efficient. And two, um, there is a potential that I could blow out the power supply by not using enough power. Um, uh, I learned this from, uh, my old boss, a uh, great guy, respect him greatly. Uh, he knew quite a considerable bit. Um, and he had told me previously, like several years back, I had a similar problem with the gaming rig that I had where I heard very, very strange noises coming from the back of it. So I looked at the back of it going, what the hell was that noise? Right as fireworks started shooting out of the power supply. Uh, the trick is I had like a thousand watt power supply and I needed like a 600 watt power supply. So I, I was, I was killing the power supply cause I wasn't using enough power. Uh, so I didn't want to get too much power. So I'm sitting there, I'm trying to figure out what the hell do I need? What, what kind of power requirements do I need? So I was looking for a 600 to a 650 watt power supply because I figured that would be perfect. I mean, I've only got a Core i7 processor. Yes, okay, I have 24 gig of RAM, but that's not a lot. Uh, I mean, eight, eight sticks of RAM doesn't take that much power up. Uh, I have uh, one really good video card that I can't remember the model of, or, model of right now. It's an NVIDIA 660? Something like that. Mm. Uh, and two uh, SATA hard drives. I don't even have a CD drive in the server. So I don't need that much power, but I couldn't figure out how much power I needed. So I was guessing about 600 to 650. Uh, and at Best Buy, they had 400s for 20s, which is strange. I've never seen the marked as 20s before. Uh, but it's 400s, 420s, 500s, and 520s. I'm like, crap, I wanted 600s. And there was one other one. It was a 750. I'm like, ah, oh, that's, that's 100 more than I want. Uh, but I don't want to underpower this thing, so I should probably get the bigger one and just risk it. I mean, it's only 750 watts. It's not that much more. And I guess worst case scenario, I could always cram some more hard drives in there to fill up some power. Um, I do kind of want to put more hard drives in there to have a better backup solution in case the motherboard fails. Since the RAID card, if the RAID card fails, I lose my RAID 1, apparently. Um, so I got to watch out for that. But... Uh, so I get home, I switch out the power supply, I plug in the server, poofs up fine, no problems whatsoever. Well, okay, minor problems, but that's because during my testing to figure out what exactly was wrong, I reset the BIOS. 
So I'd go in, I'd reset the clocks, I'd reset the boot priority and all that fun stuff. Uh, but I mean, nothing, nothing major, nothing problematic. Uh, so it's running, it's running great right now. It's running perfect. Uh, haven't noticed any problems with it. I have actually noticed that it's sounding better. Uh, like for months now, I had been hearing this very strange whirring noise coming from the living room. I knew it was the server, but I figured it was just the case fan was dying, so I wasn't thinking about it. Uh, apparently, it was the CPU or the power supply fan, which may have explained why it failed. Um, but anyways, I took a look at that power supply. I'm like, just really curious. I'm like, okay, how much power does this thing have? So I picked it up and I looked at it. It said 450 watts. So I could have gotten away with the 500s and the 520s. So I spent a little bit of extra money, but it wasn't bad. Um, it was in Best Buy. It was ninety nine dollars. Uh, well, ninety nine ninety nine, so a hundred dollars. But on the Best Buy website, it was eighty nine ninety nine, ninety bucks. So I could. So I, I just showed them the phone that where I had the page loaded up, and they price matched the website for me. So it was pretty cool. Um, so it's a possibility, albeit a small one, that that power supply was overloaded. I had too much being pulled out of it, and that's why it died. Or it could be that it just petered off and died. I mean, it, it's been running for five, six, seven years. I mean, five years for a computer is actually pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty average lifespan for a computer is five years. Um so getting it to run five, six, seven years is actually pretty good. And now that I've replaced the motherboard and I've replaced the power supply and I've replaced the video card, technically, I actually, it was a hand-me-down kind of thing. That The video card that's in there is actually the old video card from here. And that's because I used that as my media center out in the living room. So the big, well, I, I would say the big bad HDTV, but this is the big bad HDTV that I'm using right here. That one's actually, uh, I got as a housewarming gift from my dad when I had my first apartment, my first ever apartment that I paid for myself and I take care of myself, it was mine. Uh, my first ever apartment, it was the housewarming gift. Uh, it was a, it's a Polaroid TV and everything in the manual specifically stated that the native resolution is 1920 by 1080, so 1080p. Uh, but doing some research, trying to figure out, like I started using it as a monitor. I'm like, why is everything so blurry? Um, I mean, like little tiny text, it's also blurry and kind of, it doesn't look right, but this TV was beautiful as a TV. So I did some research on it and every single piece of information, this was several years later. So this was like five years later that I uh, started looking at this. Every single piece of information tells me that this is a 720p TV. The native resolution is 720. Uh, so it's upscaling itself. So it doesn't look nearly as good. And that's why the text on a monitor on like a, the Windows screen when I was using it as a monitor looked so blurry it is because it wasn't designed to be 1080. Uh, it worked with TV. It looked better with TV, but it's like upscaling HD or it's uh, like upscaling DVDs. Um, it looks better than it did, but it's not going to look as good as a native resolution, like a Blu-ray or an HD DVD, which in my personal opinion, HD DVDs always looked better than Blu-ray to begin with. But uh, they lost, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, the server's back up and running. I got Quest for Creative going. I've got, uh, a new little twist on it because I don't want to give up on the world yet. I want to keep exploring it and keep having fun with the mods. And so I've decided to start focusing on specific mods and start exploring them. So I'm looking at witchery, uh, then I'll move on to other mods, um, you know, just for the fun of it, just to see what I can do with it. Um, I know Space wants me to do a uh, community mod, the mod pack that uh, we made with, on my old server. And I do want to do that. I do want to take a look at it because, I mean, I've been doing so much with a mod pack that was built by professionals. I want to see what I can do with mod packs that was built by an amateur. Now, don't get me wrong. He is an amateur but it's not a bad thing. It, it sounds bad that he's, I say amateur, but that's only because a lot of people use amateur in a negative sense. Uh, it's not really negative. It's just experience levels. And if you have a little bit of experience uh, and you're working to get more experience, yes, you're an amateur, but it's still a good thing. Uh, if you have little experience and you're a dick about it, then you're just an asshole. Uh, that has nothing to do with amateur status at all. Uh, 
Anyway, so that's what's going on with the server. The server's good. We're good to go there. Uh, so what's next? All right, so we've got some fun recently. Uh, yesterday, I saw this a lot. And, uh, well, yesterday and the day before yesterday, I saw this a lot. And that is that Google, quote, is screwing indie musicians. Okay, and this is what I'm seeing. Okay, so uh, let me let me start from where I wanted to start from. Okay, in front of your in front of you right now is something that gives you more power than has ever been seen in the history of mankind and you don't even realize it. And it doesn't matter what you're watching this video on right now. If you're watching it on a tablet, if you're watching it on a phone, if you're watching it on a computer, even if you're watching it on a Wii or a Wii U, the device in front of you gives you at your fingertips more power than has ever been seen in the history of mankind. And it comes from the knowledge that you have direct access to. And when they say knowledge is power, they're not kidding. Knowledge is power. The more you know, the better off you are in the long run and in the short run, technically. Um, so, uh, you, so you have all of this power right there, and we have proven that we have this power and we can use this power. Like, do you remember two years ago, three years ago, four years ago? I don't remember anymore. Uh, I don't remember how long. I don't remember the details. I don't remember the specifics. I don't remember the general ideas. Um, where we actually managed to stop the bill that was being passed in the U.S. government called SOPA and PIPA. Uh, basically, they were just really, really bad laws uh, to try to maximize copyright and screw over everybody, basically, uh, including content creators in the long run. It would have screwed them, too. Uh, but because so many people fought that and argued against that and we pulled together on the Internet and we won, that shows how much power we have. But... As is very common knowledge, if anybody's ever watched Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. We can easily, easily abuse this power even without us knowing it. Uh, news reports do this all the time. We call this fear-mongering. Uh, blogs do this. Uh, all stuff online. They try to fake you out. They try to give you false information and all that fun stuff. Um, and you got to watch out for that. And you've got to do your research before you jump onto any bandwagon. And that's what happened with this whole Google thing. So everybody's like, oh my God, Google is screwing the little guy. Um, so basically what happened is Google is creating a subscription service for music videos. Okay, now, as we all know, music videos is a big, huge thing of contention on Google, on, on YouTube. Uh, the whole copyright thing, the RIAA, the ASCAP, and all of those people, be whoever the freaking royalty collection companies are, uh, record companies in general, they're all kinds of pissed off at YouTube because they claim YouTube is infringing on their copyright uh, and they should do something about it even though they have uh, third-party protections and whatever like that. Uh, but YouTube is trying. This is how we get the bullshit with copy ID, cop, uh, the content ID system and all that fun crap. So... You know, YouTube is trying, they're trying, and they're trying, but it's never enough, and it's always getting pushed, it's always getting pushed, it's always getting pushed. So what Google is trying to do, they're trying to push in a different direction. So instead of trying to force people to not put up content, they're actually trying to work with those people and still pay royalties to the uh, the copyright owners. I was about to say the content creators, but that's bullshit. Uh, it's the copyright owners, the record labels that are the ones that are bitching about this the most, and they're the ones that are getting paid for all of this. Um, don't let them fool you. It's not the artist that really wants this, no matter what they actually say. It's the record labels, because they're the ones getting paid for it. The artist, chances are, is not getting paid any of this. Um, but the general idea is that right now we get advertising revenue, okay? And then that advertising revenue is split between the video uploader and the uh, artist, the, the song, the, well, the con copyright owner. Um, 
and that's actually kind of cool. That's actually a pretty good way to deal with it. Uh, that way you can do covers and you don't have to worry about getting your butt suit off. Because then, uh, as far as I can tell, this is actually something YouTube does. Now, I just play video games. I don't do covers of music, so I don't have any personal experience with it. This is just what I'm read reading. So if I'm wrong on this, uh, just let me know in the comments. Uh, please be civil. Uh, just, yeah, just correct me in the comments. I'm more than willing to admit that I'm wrong. Uh, I'm more than willing to look at counterpoints and stuff like that, decent debates and stuff like that. Just uh, be civil. Um, but this is what I'm hearing. From what I understand, they actually have a system in place that if you want to do a cover of a song, yes, you have to agree to give some of your uh, ad revenue to uh, the, the copyright owner, but you can still do it. You don't have to worry about getting your channel kicked. And that's actually pretty cool. That's actually a step in the correct direction. I like that idea. Now, the problem with that is the people that use Adblock. And I've covered this before. It's not actually, that's not the problem. That's just a symptom of the problem. The problem is the advertisements themselves. They're absolutely ter terrible. And that people will deal with a little bit of a guilty conscience or no guilty conscience at all, depending on who you are, I guess, technically. Um, and just not deal with the advertisements. Uh, like I said, that's a problem with the advertisements themselves, uh, not a problem with ad block and not a problem with the people. It's, you know, the advertisements are just, they are absolutely horrific and they seem to be getting worse. Um, I, recently I saw one that was an hour and four minutes. I put this up on Google Plus, uh, but it was an hour and four minutes for a video that was like 20 minutes long. It was, just, that is, ugh. That is terrible. That is just terrible beyond belief. Um, but anyway, so um, so there are people that aren't uh, paying their due, technically. And I'm just going to use that term. Like I, I, I keep saying this over and over and over again. I'm not blaming anybody who uses Adblock Plus. I, I don't hold you responsible at all um, because you're not in the wrong. Um you are actually in the right, so just a different kind of right than the people who are using, who are watching the ads. It's your right, just your different kind of right. Um, so that's why I keep saying this over and over and over again. I'm trying, I'm tr trying to make sure that you know I'm not insulting you. Uh, but anyway, so uh, the advertisements suck. People don't watch the advertisements. Uh, the copyright owner doesn't get paid. So what Google is trying to do, they figure, okay, we'll push everybody over to a subscription model. So what will happen is people will pay however much a month and they can watch all of the music videos that they could possibly want. And then that subscription price will be split up between the uh, uploader and the, co uh, the copyright owner. And then, you know, everybody will be happy because, hey, money. But then everybody just freak the fuck out. Because like 90% of the record labels agreed to this. They're like, mm, yeah, there we go. But 10% didn't. Um, and so the stories are going around that 10% of all music videos are going to go bye-byes. Because 10% didn't agree with them, so Google's going to kick them off. Uh, now, this is what I was talking about, about people giving false information online. They may not be doing it intentionally, but they are. So you got to be very, very careful. This is not... Whoa. This is not what Google's doing. It is not. Uh, basically, what's happening is, uh, one, if you don't agree to the new terms of service, you you lose your monetization. Okay, that's it. No advertisements on your videos, period. Uh, you don't get paid for it, it, but people don't get to see ads. Uh, that, that, I mean, that's, I would expect that. Uh, now, this has been confirmed. In the very same articles that are bitching about the little guys getting screwed, it has been confirmed that the little guys aren't going to get kicked off of YouTube. They're still going to have their stuff there, even if they don't agree to the new terms. Uh, it just means that they can't monetize their stuff. Now, if they come out with a new terms of service or, yeah, a, a new EULA or whatever for um, ad, or AdSense uh, and you don't agree to it, you would lose your access to AdSense. I mean, that makes sense. That's, I mean, it's what you would expect, isn't it? Uh, if you, if World of Warcraft comes out with a new EULA and you don't agree to the new EULA, you lose access to World of Warcraft. We would expect this to happen. So if Google says, hey, we're coming out with a new terms of service for AdSense, if you don't agree with it, you're going to lose your monetization. Why are people pissed about this? This is expected. It's supposed to happen. Now, I can understand that you want to... 
uh, negotiate with them. And that's that, from what I'm gathering, is what the 10% are trying to do, is that they're trying to negotiate with Google to get a better deal. And I've got no problem with that either. Negotiate with Google, but eventually there's going to be a line drawn that says, you know what, this is it. If you don't agree to it, then you're not going to have monetization. And that's it. Okay. Now, the second thing is that, okay, so now people are either going to have a, have to be forced into the subscription model or they're going to not gonna be able to put up advertisements at all or anything. They're not going to be able to make any money off of it. Um, so that's also screwing the little guy because they don't want to force people to pay for their music. This is also not true. Now, I've, I've seen this here, bits and pieces of this here and there, so I'm piecing this together. Um, and it makes complete sense with how Google would work. Uh, so what it is, is if as long as you agree to the new terms of service, you have the chance of using advertisements or getting subscription revenue, depending on what the end user pays for. So if, say, I sign up for uh, this service, I can go and watch your your video and not have to watch an advertisement. You get part of my uh, part of the fee that I pay for the subscription. Okay, that's that's actually pretty cool. Uh, but if say person B, uh, you know, doesn't pay for the subscription service, but they want to watch the music video, well, guess what? They get advertisements. That's what happens. Okay, how is this a problem? This is a good thing. This is a very very good thing. And if they actually pass this on to people like me where I don't do music, but I do like video games and stuff. Um, granted, you know, we have to worry about a whole new level of lo royalties, which I'll get to in a minute, uh, because I don't have to pay royalties. The games I play specifically state I'm allowed to do this without paying royalties. Um, so, uh, I mean, if they offered something like that for me, where the, the choice was, you know, if somebody pays for a subscription then they don't have to watch ads. But if they don't pay for a subscription, then they have to watch ads. I'm all for that. I rock on, man. That is a great thing. I love this idea, in fact. It's a good idea. Um, but claiming that it's going to kick people off of YouTube is false, straight up. Uh, claiming that uh, it's going to screw the little guys is false, straight up. Uh, hang on, I'm fixing my focus. There we go. I'm not using autofocus again because it just kind of got screwy real quick. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is a good thing. I don't see why people think this is such a bad thing, except for the fact that they're listening to knee-jerk reactions. So do what I do. Uh, it, this actually works a lot. Uh, separate yourself from the emotion. Don't, like, suppress the emotion. Don't become Vulcan. Uh, keep the emotion because that's what makes you human. But... Teach yourself to separate your opinion from your emotion. And then you can actually see what should happen, what's best for mo the most amount of people versus, you know, the torch and pitchfork thing. Because that's what it comes down to. It comes down to mob justice. And we don't want to fuck over the power that we have by messing it up, by wasting it. So, yeah. So what I was saying before about royalties, um, this is big news, and I've seen this a bunch of different places, and it just kind of blew my mind. So everybody was everybody was talking about uh, should Let's Players play, pay royalties to the c developers that they're doing videos of, and I'm like, wait, this is an argument again? Why is this an argument again? I thought this was resolved a long time ago. People agree that uh, Let's Plays are a good thing for developers because it convinces people to buy more of their games. Um, but apparently it started out with the developer of Fez. I don't know the guy's name. I'm sorry about that. But apparently he put up on his Twitter that anybody who does a Let's Play of his videos should pay him because the Let's Player is stealing from him because he thinks that people will watch the video instead of buy the game. Um, now two things with that, and Total Biscuit actually did a very good job arguing with this, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. Uh, one, and this is the point he brought up, is that it comes it it's the piracy argument all over again. Uh, basically, what it is is it's not when you when you download a game without paying for it. When you go onto like the Pirate Bay and stuff like that, and you download a game, you're not stealing fuck all. You're not. 
um, th theft by definition is removing something from somebody else so that they can't use it anymore. Okay, so you're not stealing a game, you're downloading a copy. It's copyright infringement specifically. It's still illegal and to an extent wrong, but it's a gray area. Um, I still qualify it as wrong. It's on the wrong side of the gray area, so let's try not to do that. Um, so yeah, you're not stealing anything. You're not. You're not taking the game because everybody who has access to it before still has access to it. And you're not stealing any money because there's no money to steal. There's no money involved. Okay? It's what you got is the loss of potential revenue. And that is not something that comes into play at all. Even in, like, it really in copyright infringement, that barely comes into play. Um, there is a damages component to copyright infringement, but uh, it's actually a very small portion because you have to be able to prove damages and it has to be actual damages, not potential lost potential revenue. So uh, yeah, copyright's fun, but that's why they also have the added uh, up to $150,000 per instance of copyright infringement fine. Um, so yeah, if you download a game, you can potentially be liable for $150,000 of that. So it's, it's it, copyright law is weird, uh, but it's a, it is a violation of copyright law. It is, however, not theft. Okay, so that argument, it, it, the piracy argument also stems into, well, the loss of revenue. I mean, think about it. Uh, there are three kinds of pirates. There are the people that will download and will never pay, and if they didn't have the option to download, they wouldn't pay, period. Uh, whether they don't have the money, they don't like the game enough, um, that kind of thing. One way or the other, they would never pay. Okay, now these people don't come into the argument at all. They don't. Because it's not lost revenue. You can't lose revenue that you don't, you never had. You never had the opportunity to get this revenue, so it's not even lost potential revenue. So these people don't come into the argument at all. Then there are the people that will download but if there was no option to pirate it, they would pay for it, okay? Now, these people are part of a, an important part of the argument because these are the people that would pay. This is, that is the potential loss of revenue. However, the third market, the third group of people, which technically there's a fourth group of people, but they're also not important. That's the people that will pay no matter what. Uh, they're, they're the same as the other end of the scale. They don't matter in this argument at all. It's only the only two groups that matter, and it's the people that would pay if there was no other option, and the people that will pay because they got a chance to play the game first. Now, I admit, I'm like that. I have paid for quite a few things because I was able to use it first before you know, paying for it, and that is either borrowing it from somebody, downloading it. Okay, I admit I did. Uh, I don't actually much anymore. Actually, I don't at all anymore because, you know, I have YouTube. Why the fuck would I download anything? YouTube, Steam, Google Music, I'm covered. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, th so they're the people that those two groups count, count you know, uh, what, what is it called? Where two waves, two opposing waves overlap and they, ca they cancel each other out. That's what I was looking for. Uh, those two groups cancel each other out. So you have the people that would pay, but they don't. And the people that wouldn't pay, but they did because of piracy. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, those two groups cancel each other out. So piracy has no effect, not really. No appreciable effect anyways. Uh, and most really reliable independent studies actually suggest that piracy is good, that it actually helps the developers. Um, again, I don't know. It does, they, they say it does help, but it helps a little tiny bitty bit. So that's why I'm saying it doesn't really have an appreciable effect. Uh, and the, all the studies that say that piracy hurts directly are in serious question. They are double, triple, quadruple dipping in the money. They are counting the same dollar four, five, six times, that kind of thing. Uh, so the studies that say that piracy is straight up bad are 
horribly questionable or just outright false. And the studies that say that they're good are actually pretty reliable, but the studies that say it's a neutral effect are actually the most reliable. So that's what I'm going with. I'm actually going with the neutral. Um, anyway, so let's continue with this. So the, the, the creator of Fez is saying that he's, you know, that you know, you're stealing from him. Uh, that is wrong. Uh, so the second argument that comes with this outside of the piracy argument is actually uh, it, it, like the movies. Uh, if you upload a movie to YouTube, you're, you're, you're straight up copyright infringement. That is straight up copyright infringement. You're not allowed to do that. And the idea is that you can watch the movie on YouTube and you won't buy it on Blu-ray. Uh, well, that's not 100% true either um, because YouTube cannot possibly ever compare to what somebody can get in a home theater. Okay, yes, home theaters are a little bit expensive, especially if you're going with the 4K crap, though I don't know any actual content that you can play in 4K that's actually worthwhile. Um, but yeah, so there's, I mean, even just 1080p, YouTube cannot compare to proper 1080p setup. They can't. I mean, even my setup, I have a cheap, like, it was like a $400 TV that's full 1080, 1920 by 1080, and it's actually 1080, not like my Polaroid, um, and, and I got a Blu-ray player, and the Blu-ray player was like 90 bucks. Even that, even spending like 500 bucks on a setup, um, can't, YouTube cannot compare to that. It is impossible for YouTube to compare to that because it's got to worry about streaming and stuff. So saying that somebody watching it on YouTube will stop people from buying a Blu-ray, that is not true. That is not fully true. Um, but comparing that to a game is even worse, okay? Because game is an interactive thing, um, especially Fez. Now, I want to point this out. Uh, I, knew not I know nothing about Fez. I've never seen the game played. Uh, but judging from what I saw in the Total Biscuit video, if I had seen a Let's Play of Fez, I would have bought it. Because it actually looked kind of badass. And I have heard a lot of good things about Fez. Uh, Nerd Cube like, sings high praises to Fez. Um, but I've never actually seen it. I know nothing about the game. I don't know what the premise is. I don't know what the story is. I The first time I ever saw gameplay was in Total Biscuit's video. And if I would have seen a Let's Play of it, if I would have understood the story, if I would have like seen it being played, I would have bought it. I won't now because of what the creator said, and I have a moral objection to that, but that's my personal opinion. Um, but, you know, uh, yeah. So it's kind of funny. A Let's Play would have convinced me to buy the game that he's complaining about Let's Players about, which is kind of funny. Um, but anyways, uh, this is my argument, and this is going to be my final argument because we have rolled over the 30-minute mark. Um, my final argument is this. If your game, if the entire experience of your video game can be replicated on a YouTube video, a Let's Play of a YouTube video, um, you shouldn't have made that game. I'm just going to say that straight up. If you're making a game that is better suited to be a movie, then you should have made a movie, okay? Um, even with the lower graphics, the in-game graphics of the game, you could have still made the movie and it would still have been awesome. But if, you're, if your game, if the entire experience of your video game can be replicated on a YouTube video, then you probably shouldn't have made that game. And I'm going to say that straight out because you don't know how to make video games. Uh, video games are not supposed to be a cinematic experience. They're supposed to be a interactive experience. You're supposed to play games, not watch them. Okay. And like Minecraft is a perfect example. There is no way in hell that watching a video of somebody playing Minecraft or space engineers or even don't starve can compare to actually playing it. Um, there's a lot of other games out there like that. Uh, it, it, it's like the, the, the sports thing that I, I'm always talking about. I personally hate sports. I do. I, I can't stand them. They're boring as fuck. However, when I was in high school, we played football. And I enjoyed the hell out of it. But that's because I was playing it, not watching it. I find watching it boring. Watching it and playing it are two completely different experiences. Um... 
So that's how a video game should be. You shouldn't be able to experience the entirety of the video game watching over somebody's shoulder. You really shouldn't. And if you're making a video game that can be doing that, you really shouldn't be making video games. Go make a movie. Because, I mean, you might still have a good storyline. You might still have good ideas. But it's just not ideas best suited for video games. They're best suited for movies or books. So, yeah, that's what I have to say on the matter. Is, um... Let's Plays, one, are way good for developers. Especially indie developers. They are very good for developers. Unless the game straight up sucks. And, uh... Well, then, um, it's actually kind of good that people are spreading the word. I mean, that's just communication. That's basic communication. That's something that the internet was specifically designed for is communication. So, um, if your game is good, Let's Plays are good for you. Um, bitching about Let's Plays is not good. Uh, like the Nintendo thing that everybody's complaining about recently, and people are starting to get notices on, uh, Milby uh, Milby Full or whatever his full YouTube name is, he put up a tweet that he's actually getting claims on Nintendo videos, um, which I didn't reply. I should have replied. I would be like, okay, well then apparently it's time you stop putting up vi Nintendo videos, <laughs> which is my answer to that. I'm like, I'm sorry if you have a serious problem with me sharing my experiences with a video with a video game that is really unique to the person playing it you have to play it to fully experience it especially with mario kart you can't just watch mario kart you have to experience mario kart um but yeah if you have a serious problem with me sharing it then one you shouldn't put youtube access directly into mario kart 8 and two fuck you i'm done so i'm gonna end it all here i'm gonna say to you guys as always keep playing the game and have fun